So, I would like to start this PLC from a same problem uh, that we have initially solved using pneumatics. Second, we have tried to attempt the same problem using electro pneumatics and today we will do the same problem using PLCs. So, you will observe the difference in the whole process, right. So, the first logic attempt that we had made through uh, pneumatic walls little bit difficult. Yesterday we tried to simplify it using some kind of an electrical combination of components uh, uh, using relays and then switches and push buttons fine. Right? And today we are further going to simplify the task basically. Uh, what is the problem uh, the circuit that you have made using electro, electro pneumatic system. See when I draw a circuit electro pneumatic circuit if I want to change the sequence of the cylinders. Now, if you just see we have discussed that 1 a plus 2 a plus 2 a minus 1 a minus then we build the complete circuit around this sequence right. But tomorrow someone wants that I want to retract both the cylinders simultaneously. So, what do you have to do then? You have to rewire the circuit again. You have to take out all those connections and then rewire the circuit again fine. So, that is basically in a hardwired logic. I should say hardwired logic. You wire the logic using certain components and it is very difficult to change fine. And if you want to alter the sequence or alter some kind of a logic there, it is very difficult to make those changes. Second thing uh, you have seen that for a basic circuit we have used so many relays and, and physically I am sure you might have seen a size of a relay and, and, and it is my own experience. I have once visited a signal control room of Indian railways. And you cannot believe that I have seen this kind of a room filled of a relays only and it's still Siemens maintaining those kind of a facilities and, and these uh, 30, 40 years relays still controlling those signaling. But the size, the volume that is required to implement that kind of a complex logic is much, much more bigger, fine. So, you have an array of relays connected together to build a logic uh, for the system, fine. But again same constraint, if you want to change the logic, you have to do the rewiring. So, that is the most uh, critical bottleneck in using electro pneumatic system. So, then people thought of whenever there is an uh, invention of computers and the controllers. So, idea comes then we should use something that is reprogrammable. So, logic can be reprogrammed. Your wiring in the system will remain as it is. So, your input output elements will remain as it is connected with the system and then you can reprogram the logic whenever you want. And there comes basically these PLCs. Right. So, programmable if you see the terminology itself programmable logic controller right. So, this device uh, before I jump on to the next slide uh, I would like to just give you a very broad picture of a PLC uh, to me it is only three boxes inside the PLC nothing else. So, same view I would like you to visualize that. So, one is basically the processor I should say processor. So, it is almost similar to the same processor uh, to a lower level which we have in our laptops, computers. So, some kind of a controller over there with certain memory requirements. And then we will be having two more blocks connected with this processor. So, uh, suppose if I ask you uh, to build a system using this laptop which can sense the person entering into this room and control the lighting in this room. Can we do by using this laptop? If yes, how? If not, why not? What is the problem with this laptop? It has a much, much better processor I should say running at certain gigahertz, lot of memory available in terms of RAM as well in terms of hard disk. But what is the problem in using this laptop to sense? or count the number of people entering in this room and then controlling the lighting in this room. Interfacing, correct, correct, correct. So, interfacing is, it has interfaces, but not designed for have for a control application. It has interfaces. What kind of interfaces this laptop has? USB, Wi-Fi, LAN, Bluetooth, HDMI, VGA, I am using VGA to uh, put my laptop screen on the TV and anything else 
HDMI card. So, so these interfaces keep on increasing day by day, uh, but still uh, the interface required for a control application is missing. And that is the reason that we need to have a dedicated controller for those kind of applications. Right? So, these two boxes that I have made over here, these are basically senses. So, one is sense that is basically the input side of the PLC. So, we will be having a input module connected with this processor and then there will be a control part that is the output module. Right? So, actually uh, when I write a C program in my laptop, if I execute it, I can see the decision, but we need something that will actuate, that will control, fine, that will execute the decision and for that you need output interface. Right? So, decision it is fine, I can see that these are the values of the variable and I need to on and off certain things, but that is not sufficient. We need an automated control. So, there should be some circuitry, circuitry which will be controlling the application, controlling the system and for that you require output. In order yeah. to interface the processor with the input and output, we require some ports. Huh. So, it does it have its own ports or we require some? I am just coming into detail with these, uh, uh, I will go deeper and deeper in these blocks and I think I, am, I will be able to better answer your queries. So, let me first <coughs> explain the black box, right. Later we will debug the black box what is there inside it. Right. So, I am just starting with a black box concept. So, let we will just see from now onward you will see PLC as a three black boxes that nothing else. One is the processor box, second is the input element, input module and third is the output, nothing else. PLC have nothing else other than this, basic PLC I am talking about. I am talking about logic controller, slowly we will move to the automation controller then it, have, it will have more boxes, we will discuss later on. For basic understanding we will have this. So, uh, one is basically sense, another is the control and in between is the logic, right. So, you need certain input to be passed on to the controller, through that it will see basically around it or sense basically different parameters. You might have seen lot of sensors yesterday and still the world of sensor is quite big you will definitely find one appropriate for your requirement, right. So, that is one. Then as I have mentioned that logic part you will be writing, you will be building the logic, what to do when this condition happened. So, that part you will be writing yourself. So, that is basically the programming part, the logic you will be writing into this. And finally, the decision of that logic will finally control the system. So, we need to generate certain output, right. So, we will have certain terminals on this. I will just draw those terminals, same thing we will have on the output side only, fine. Now, why we need input module, why we are not directly connecting these sensors to the processor, why need, why we need a module basically or an additional circuit board for interfacing uh, these sensors with the processor, what is the wrong with that? Fine. So, analog to digital is you need some kind of a conversion in between in terms of a parameter. So, signal may be coming in the form of a varying voltage. I want to capture it and then pass on to the processor because all processors or controllers are digital, right. So, that is what uh, I will again emphasize these are all digital controllers. So, they can only understand 1 and 0 bits basically and then process the information in the same format. But if my sensor is producing uh, analog voltage output, I need to convert into number of bits and then processor can process the information, right. Secondary processor may be taking 5 volt or 12 volt. Correct. So that is the another, another reason that we need to change the level of voltages. We cannot directly give 24 volt to the processor core, it cannot handle. Processor core supposed to run at very high speed at a very low voltage, right. So, normally 1.8 nowadays they are using 1.8 volt, fine. So, so I cannot connect my 24 volt sensor directly to the processor input output pins. So, I need to basically change the level of voltage before I fed this information to the processor. So, these two conversion has to be done uh, in the input module before that information passed on for processing by the logic controller, fine. Then same thing happens with the output also. Suppose if I want to actuate a relay if I want to control a solenoid, I, I cannot drive 
that solenoid directly from a pin coming from a microcontroller or a processor. Again the reasons are same, uh, one it cannot give that kind of a voltage to drive it. Second thing is the, no, no, I want to know the second parameter that is very important in this case. Suppose if my processor pin will produce 24 volt, what is the second parameter I need to take care of in controlling solenoid? Current. Current. current, very important. So current, the power required to drive that output is very important and it is basically again a product of voltage and current. So even if my processor is producing 24 volt as a output, it may not be able to source 500 milliampere or 1 ampere current that is not there with the controller. It is just communicating the logic, it is a high or low, then you require some, some kind of a circuit to drive the load finally and that is basically circuit coming inside the output module. So that is basically the broad picture of a PLC starting from an input to the output, then I will just move to the next slide. So there are 5 basic components in a PLC system. Uh, processor or a controller that I have shown you in the uh, black box, then there are input output modules, fine. Then there is a support at the back or the connectivity module we call a chassis or a back plane. Suppose if I am having a multiple modules, now the PLCs are available in a different configuration. Configuration means I can have a standalone, so my single box will house all three things together. I will be having input. I will be having a controller, I will be having output, everything housed in a single unit, right. Sometimes it is difficult once I bought an hardware and tomorrow I realize that I need more input output pins on the controller, so then I cannot expand it. So that is the limitation on the standalone one. So then people have designed it in a more modular way. So then you will be getting a controller, then you will be keep on adding the input and output modules, so you keep on expanding the, the controller functionality. So then it is basically more modular, fine. But once you have multiple input output modules, then how to connect them so that they will all be communicating with the controller, so that the role of a chassis or a backplane in the system, fine. Then you definitely because once you have a electrical system on the uh, 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 board, then you require power supply. So you need to provide an appropriate power supply for the PLCs as well as the I.O. modules. And finally the logic part, how you build the logic, so controller, they will be programming the controller and then there will be a programming language for doing the same, right. And the good part on the, uh, I, I should say, the people who develop PLCs and then they try to minimize the efforts in learning PLC programming, reason being those who are earlier designing electro pneumatic circuits, those are the potential user of PLC and they do not want to put a hurdle of a programming in them. So that is the reason that the complete programming interface developed for PLC or the language is a graphical language and that we call ladder logic or ladder diagram. So they designed a programming concept in a way, uh, suppose a guy who is working 30 years in designing electro pneumatic circuits. So tomorrow if I just give him a box that you have to program this. So he had a very vast experience in building logic, but then if you put a barrier of a programming, I, I think that is for all mechanical uh, people and sometimes with the electrical guys also, you are not so familiar with the programming part. So they tried to made it much simpler by designing a programming language which is similar to the way they are designing electro pneumatic circuits. So that is the reason before uh, starting PLC I would like to discuss with the uh, electro pneumatic circuits and the if you remember the same way we build the electrical circuit or logic circuit we will do the programming of PLC in the same way and that is what the similarity they have created and the ease of learning PLC programming. So we require a software where we will build the logic and finally compiling that logic and transferring into the core of a controller, fine. So once it has been transferred, then it is ready to execute that logic, fine. So that is the idea. So fifth component is basically the programming and lastly then uh, if you remember, uh, I remember that I think 20 years back, uh, you may be having standalone computers, they are very powerful and useful. But nowadays computer without network is of no use. So people are searching Wi-Fi, LAN, somewhere in the room, somewhere it is available because we need connectivity, fine. So same thing has been provided with the PLCs also. So nowadays almost all PLCs are coming with some kind of a network communication. So that is basically the add-on, you require some kind of an, a 
communication interface and, and uh, some kind of a LAN interface or some kind of a Profi bus or some RS-232 or 485. So, some kind of communication. So, that we need not to keep one PLC standalone. It has to interact with all systems around, all PLCs in this uh, uh, room or a uh, institute or a plant or, or sometimes even remote. Fine. So, that is the advantage of having a communication connectivity with these PLCs. So, that is basically a broad idea. Let us go into detail little bit. How many of you are understanding what is digital, what is analog? Fine. So, uh, let me just quickly uh, give a brief idea because that is the first lesson I should say it is required, uh, that understanding is required. When I say uh, digital information available or digital input, let me just put in this way. If I say D i and D o, digital input and digital output. So, those who know can they give some examples of D i's? Which kind of input element give me D i digital inputs? Switches. Switches, push, switches. push buttons, switches and the proximity switches that I have mentioned uh, and you might have seen that whenever something is near the uh, sensor, it will give either high or low. So, so proximity switches, I am not putting sensor word in DI, uh, I, I need to know the reason for that. Correct. So, when I say sensor, that is the reason I am emphasizing on switches, I am emphasizing on push buttons. Once I put a temperature sensor, my DI will not work. Encoder output. Hmm. Encoder output. It will give a series of pulses basically, encoder. <coughs> Fine. Then we will discuss DO, solenoid, solenoid. Motors. Relays. relays, and and someone say alarm, so lamps basically, yeah. hooter. So, basically output uh, where you will be just making them on and off to state. So, when I say digital, it means either 0 or 1, whether it is an input device or an output device, it will be just working on two state logic 0 or 1, 0 means off, 1 means on. Right? So, it is 1. Now, when I say uh, analog, then I will be putting AI and AO. So, now can I have examples of analog input? Yeah, potential temperature sensor, let me just put temperature sensor, pressure sensor, micro, microphone, level sensor is basically a kind of a potentiometer I should say meter, transmitters, flow, transmitters. flow transmitters, flow meters basically. So, uh, these are the analog uh, input and those who are not knowing what exactly is analog input, can they distinguish between the previous slide that I have shown, the kind of a digital inputs and then these analog inputs, what exactly the difference they can see? Yeah, please. Sir, in this room we have placed the temperature sensor. Uh -huh. There are two options to it's for generalized understanding. Uh, one state is that <coughs> if the sensor reads 65 degrees Celsius, that means the room is in the state of fire. Mm -hmm. So I need only one kind of triggering. If the sensor reads 65 degree, the room is on fire. Mm -hmm. Everyone should evacuate and water should be mm -hmm. started. So that is what type of? Uh, it's a digital it's state. It's a digital basically. So maybe the temperature is 55, but nothing is happening. So, that is the state of when we say that digital, that uh, we Correct. are calibrating, that, that converting. That is digital uh, input <coughs> taken from a temperature or I should say thermostat. In general, I should read that what is the room temperature where I am sitting. Yeah, so if I just want to display that room temperature somewhere in uh, this case, in then I need to have a range of information that has to be communicated. Basically. So, it is not a just two state, it is basically intermediate values also that is useful for me. Right? So, so now, yeah. Depending upon temperature range, yeah. we can adjust also steam uh, bulb, uh, the damper positions. Uh -huh. by, uh, that is also fine. So that is basically we are taking a decision 
if it is less than or greater than that's all no. and that kind it of circuit is already there yeah it could be depending upon the temperature range it could be actually it's uh, one and one position that means analog analogically it will control <coughs> That means it is uh, temperature suppose from 30 degree to 60 degree. Mm -hmm. We can also. Uh, nee, but that is fine. But if I just want to tap some temperature in between, and, right? and I just want to keep a record of a temperature in this room every hour. Mm -hmm. Suppose if I am interested in that kind of a information, then you will yeah, be capturing every hour what is the value, fine. Right? So in case of a digital, it's basically a state, either zero or one. Mm -hmm. And in when we talk about analog, we are interested in some value. So yeah, right. Right. Yeah, we are just, uh, yeah, definitely. So when I say value, it means I am interested in the magnitude of that parameter. Right. So, so representation of magnitude will be different than just a state. I can say 0 or 1, it's fine on and off. But if I am interested in some value representation, 34 degree or 35 degree or 40 degree, something like that, then it will require a representation of a value, basically. That is one thing. Second thing is, Analog one, as she mentioned, that it's not two state; it's an infinite state. In between. So if I have a range, let me put that. If I have a range, that my temperature will sensor will be recording zero to hundred degrees centigrade. So then, this over a period of time, this will keep on varying. Continuously. Any instantaneous value. At at any moment, there will be some value of that particular parameter. So continuously varying. It can take any value from 0 to 100 degree centigrade over a period of time. While in case of a digital, it's only 2, either 0 or 1. Fine. So that's the variation. But uh, suppose now come to uh, uh, interface that we are supposed to have with a processor. Let me just put this. If I have an analog, uh, sorry, if I have a digital input. So suppose if I have to connect a push button to this TLC. How can I do that? I will be just putting a push button here and then providing this plus 24 volt. <coughs> Fine, this is a this one. Fine, so I have connected uh, in this way. So whenever uh, PLC will or this processor will read this particular input, based on the state of this push button, it will get 0 or 1. So 0 or 1 will get uh, communicated inside the PLC processor or controller. Fine. Now, uh, let us take an example of a temperature sensor. Now, if I have to connect a temperature sensor to this input module, how can I connect that and how the information will be passed on to the processor. So, let me just place, I am not making exact symbol of that. Suppose, if I am putting a temperature sensor over here and I will be giving a power supply required for this. Suppose this is the output from a sensor, right? And if I connect it to a, a pin of an input module, then what exactly the information that my processor is getting from this? That is something I would like to understand from you. So we, because that makes very clear understanding uh, the analog information processing how it happens inside the controller. So if my so now let me elaborate little bit more. This temperature sensor is basically we have a calibration from 0 to 10 volt uh, and, and 0 to 100 degree centigrade. Fine. So I, I have some kind of a calibration data available with me that certain temperature is represented by a certain voltage. Fine. So 0 to 10 volt is my, the, uh, my uh, output voltage that I am getting from a sensor and it is representing 0 to 100 degree centigrade. Fine. So if I am getting 5 volt, I can understand it is in a 50 degree centigrade temperature. Fine. That is a basic understanding about this. Now how my logic controller will understand it is a 50 degree centigrade temperature? What, what, the inform, what information basically flows inside? Yeah. So, so th this is giving analog input. Suppose I am I am taking an example. This is producing five volts. Suppose yeah. Then that analog is converted to digital. Yeah. Digital. So then uh, that's the what I just want to extract from you. <laughs> it means that once the analog input is available, then there is a module required, which is basically ADC. So analog to digital conversion is required before it get communicated to a controller. 
fine. So, that is right. So, if my if I just draw a very broad block that this is terminal where I am I am getting certain voltage let me say plus 5 volt fine. Then I will be just taking out so many lines from this and that basically represent the resolution of the ADC. What I mean by resolution let me explain little bit more. If I say if I am having an 8 bit resolution of my ADC, if I say if I have a 10 bit resolution of my ADC 12 bit 16 bit. It means that if I put a 8 bit resolution ADC I will be having 8 lines coming out of ADC. If I say 10 bit resolution I will be getting 10 lines coming out of PL this ADC similarly 12 and 16 fine and those many bits are representing the information those many bits are representing the information fine. So, if I say uh, let us start with a 8 bit resolution ADC. So, what I mean then we are discretizing the range. So, my temperature range is from 0 to 100 degree centigrade and my output from a sensor is 0 to 10 volt. So, I will be now making discrete divisions for this complete range and every division is representing certain information fine. So, so if I discretize the whole uh, 0 to 10 volt or I said 0 to 100 degree centigrade. <coughs> I will be dividing this into 256 values if I am using 8 bit resolution fine 2 raise power 8 starting from 0 0 0 to all 1 1 1 that is basically 0 to 255 total levels will be 256 fine. So, if I just want to represent this information let me just come to this. So, if I am using 8 bit let me just write 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that is all. So, 8 bit information I can have here. So, the lowest value will be all 0 and the highest value that you will get is all 1 and when you convert them into decimal it is 0 and this is 255 this is 255. So, from, from starting from 0 then total levels will be 256 fine. So, uh, this is the way I will be discretizing the or I will be just capturing the analog voltages and discretizing finally or, or converting into a digital form and then PLC or the logic controller will be capturing this value. So, if you see in case of a digital input re require only one bit and whenever I want to capture an analog value I will be requiring multiple bits. So, information is then transmitted from a module input module to a controller depending on whether it is a digital input or analog input the number of bits communicated to the controller fine. So, in case of an analog input we always require many bits depending on the resolution fine. When I say 16 bit resolution then it will be basically the 16 bit representation that has been communicated to the controller. What is the advantage of increasing the resolution? The minimum voltage or the minimum value of the parameter that you can measure. So, that is basically a uh, resolution part and that is very important basically whenever we select any analog input module we should always look at the specification and we should see how much bit resolution it has and nothing is coming free every 2 bit resolution increase will be increasing cost to 20,000 rupees. So, you should be careful in choosing a right ADC or right analog input module fine. Eight bit modules is much easily available and at a lower cost, but immediately if you go to a 16 bit module cost will be shoot up to lakhs. So, that is the difference as I have mentioned in the first lecture it itself you should be economical. It is not just you are fancy enough to capture a few millivolts. I am very happy if I have my system is able to capture few millivolts, but my sensor is not producing even volts. So, if I my sensor is producing 0 0.1 volt output 0 0.1 volt step why should I go for a millivolt. So, that is the something that you should keep in mind whenever you are selecting a particular input module analog input module clear fine. What, what other thing that matters to me when I select an analog input module one is the resolution I understand. So, to capture the sampling 
sampling frequency, how fast I can capture the signal, fine. Because again you are discretizing, you are capturing at a certain moment, fine. But if the signal is changing so fast and you are sampling at a slower rate, you will not be getting a continuous domain capture, fine. So you should be aware of, again that depends how fast your signal is changing, it is not the capability of the ADC that comes into picture, that will come later. First you need to understand your signal, how fast it is changing. If I just want to capture the temperature of this room, it is not changing so fast. Why should I bother to have a very fast sampling rate? Even if I sample at a 1 second or 5 second, uh, that is good enough for me, even 15 second, that is fine for capturing the temperature of this room. But sometimes in a process, if it is changing so fast, then I should have a fast sampling frequency, fine. So these two things, I think uh, I am not going into detail of this uh, uh, analog input uh, uh, in this way. So the basic understanding I just pass on to you, first is the resolution, you should understand that and second is the sampling frequency that matters and, and again all depends on the type of uh, uh, input signal that you have, fine. Uh, can you give example of analog output because that I have left there, analog output motors where you require to have a uh, variable motors and speaker. In case of an automation, can you just give me example? Control valves. See, you have just mentioned solenoid, though we are not covering that topic uh, in this course. Uh, there are two types of solenoids. The one that you have seen is basically again two state, either on and off solenoid, right? There are proportional solenoids. So, suppose if you have a wall, you may not be opening either, you are not making two things, either fully closed or fully open. There are intermediate values as well. So, suppose if I am controlling a flow rate, I need a proportional wall, fine. So, in between I can set any value. So, whatever analog output you will provide to these walls, it will get opened according to that. So, if it is 0 volt, it is a fully closed, 100 volt, uh, sorry 10 volt, it is fully open. But if I want to open 1 fourth, half, 3 fourth, then you have to give a appropriate volt, 2.5 volt, 5 volt, 7.5 volts. So, that kind of, kind of output should be produced by the uh, logical controller communicated to the output module and that it will generate a suitable outputs. And how, how that will be generated then, so the, the other part of the ADC is how you will be converting that information. So, PLC will be communicating a 8 bit value to a output module. It has its responsibility of output module to produce a voltage. Yeah, so you require an other way conversion. So now digital information is available, it has to be passed on outside in the form of a voltage and you require a digital to analog converter, DAC, fine. So these two basically chips sits inside these modules, analog in, uh, input modules uh, and output modules. So an input modules will be having ADC and output modules will be having DAC, fine, analog to DAC. So that they will do their appropriate conversion before controller will process the information and, and it will generate the output, fine. So these are the, uh, sorry, uh, these are the basic elements uh, of a uh, components of a PLC, we will just move little bit further. So processor, controller or CPU, it is as I mentioned, it is similar uh, hardware as your laptop and desktops or servers has, but a reduced level of that. So uh, then definitely you require certain memory to support that, RAM and ROM, I think everybody knows that. What is the difference? No, I am not say asking in the form the simple answer that is store it does not store. Uh, no, do not give me that answer. What exactly you are going to store in RAM and what you are going to store in ROM? Is the so, the program that you will be writing, it should go where? ROM. ROM. So, it will reside in a controller. So, the, unless you are erasing it again, <laughs> it should be there. So, whenever we switch off the system, the program is still there. So, then why we need RAM? To process, process what? Temporary variables. So how can you estimate the RAM requirement uh, from your program? The level of computation. Level of computation. Computation means what? We will check the temporary variables available. Variables. So the, see, the RAM basically holds the variable values. So the number of variables that you can <coughs> use in your program is basically limited by the RAM of the controller. 
fine. So, if I have a RAM and each variable is taking suppose 10 bit or 16 bit, then I should estimate if I am using 1000 variables in my program, what should be the size of a RAM. So, RAM is directly related with the number of variables that you will be handling in the program and your program size basically decides the permanent memory of the controller that is a ROM part fine. So, that is the difference here. I think rest is clear. Uh, I will just show you the kind of a, a PLC here. One is the standalone where you have all three blocks together input, output and the controller in the single box and the second one is the modular. Uh, each vertical strip is basically a module and then you will be connecting them together. So, we will have basically both type of PLCs in the lab. We will show you more on uh, uh, these architecture whenever we visit the lab. Then as I mentioned that we require I O modules fine and these are the I O modules that you fit inside the chassis to connect with the PLC and here the I O modules are directly on the available on the PLC as a standalone terminals. Now let us see input output I think I have already explained this. So, when we talk about digital input again there are lot of variations sometimes input is coming in terms of a 120 volt AC. 110 volt AC or it may be in 24 volt DC. So, modules will be available in that format. So, you will be choosing those appropriate modules, what is the level of voltage that it can handle right. So, that way you will be having different uh, modules and then you, see, you can see that there is an AD conversion uh, shown over there. So, before the information communicated to a controller, you have to do an appropriate conversion uh, in that case right. Then you have a uh, various options of connecting these input modules switch 24 volt DC, we have a pressure 4 to 10, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp and temperature 0 to 10 volt DC. Uh, again my question is here why not pressure 0 to 10 volt DC? Compared to the inner switch, that means uh, if uh, any uh, problem in the line. Uh, for others? Voltage drop. So, let me just get answer from them. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, what you understand from if I say 4 to 20 milliampere and if I say 0 to 10 volt DC. In one I am just sensing the current, in another I am sensing a voltage. Uh, how, how it matters to you? What makes a difference and what is uh, your logic of making a decision whether I want a current output from a sensor or whether I want a voltage output from a sensor? How can you decide that? Or it can be used interchangeably, there is no issue. No. Yep, actually Such there will be a drop of voltage. Hmm? There will be a voltage drop. Suppose if I uh, want to have a pressure transmitter, a pressure sensor and I have a PLC here and pressure sensor is 100 meter away from this PLC. And then this sensor is now producing 0 to 10 volt DC. And if this sensor is giving a 4 to 20 milliampere current, so what is the difference that I can get? at the end of a PLC when I when I am trying to capture the information. So, transmission will Correct. Be so, the wire is basically having some resistance. Though my sensor is producing 5 volt DC immediately at the output of a sensor, but the information that is reaching to a controller is a reduced information. So, it may not be 5 volt directly, it may be reaching 4.8 volt. So, though the parameter in the field is giving 40 bar pressure but my controller is understanding it is 38 bar fine because of the line losses in between understand that. So, that is the problem with whenever you are trying to place sensors at a larger distance. So, you cannot use a digital uh, or, or you cannot use a voltage basically I should say you cannot use voltage. What is the difference in the current sensor because the, uh, the circuitry inside the sensor is designed in a way it will maintain that current in the loop in the circuit loop complete circuit. Ultimately, your PLC will be converting into voltage, then only it will be other further digitizing it. So, that that principle is remains same, but I will be putting a resistance near the PLC, so that the that current flow will produce a voltage here. And this voltage then I will be passing or my controller will be understanding that fine. And so, this current is maintained by the uh, sensor itself, so that there there is no drop as such. If there is a resistance, then it will be putting more voltage to make the same current flowing into the lines. So, that is the uh, 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 most important point you should always remember when, when to choose a current uh, sensor, wherever it is produce a current output 
or a voltage output that matters. So, normally uh, we will have an option to have both the kind of inputs on these modules, but you, you will again choose a module. Sometimes it may be possible that you will be getting module which will only take voltage, sometimes it will take only current, sometimes they are possible uh, with certain configuration you can have a module, it can take current as well as a voltage. So, these are certain things that you should take care of whenever you are selecting an input module. Fine. Yeah, please. Uh, let, let me not interfere here uh, with the kind of wireless sensor because there are lot of things required apart from just sensing. It is not just a sensor alone, you require to have a complete controller and then a communication sit inside the sensor. Fine. So, that, that will come later if the time permits we will discuss on that. So, this you understand discrete and analog, uh, fine, I think I will not be describing with the help of slide. Same thing happens with the output also, this I have already explained with the help of uh, uh, this board here. Again you will have different type of outputs over here, you can produce 0 to 10 volt proportional output voltage, you can have a 120 volt AC fan running, you can have a 24 volt DC light on and off. So, there may be again different options available in this case. Sir, yeah. Sir, uh, that is the uh, current control and voltage control, whatever the processor is there. Mm -hmm. so, so, ultimately, sir, uh, what is the reason behind it and uh, which one is more suitable, sir? That is what I have mentioned that. See, processor only understand bits. Let me just start from there. Processor only capture the bits. This bit has to be coming from certain conversion that we have discussed <coughs> that it is an analog to digital conversion. So, analog part require a voltage. So, ultimately, the the conversion is taking place of a voltage. Now, make this voltage available near the controller before it decode into a digital form. You need to make that voltage which is proportional to the parameter outside, right. So, if I am connecting a sensor just nearby, so there will be very less drop in the wires that you are using to connect to the controller. Suppose my wire length is much larger, then the actual parameter value is different than what I am trying to capture over here because of the line losses. So, th so, in this case if you can just take it as a rule, thumb rule or something, whenever there is a large distance and you expect a drop across the wires, then try to have a current, which the sensor which will produce a current output, output fine, that is the reason. Then as I mentioned that PLC nowadays are not just a standalone units, now it is more a part of a control system. So, you will be having different devices communicating among themselves over a network, right. So, then you will be having different types of PLCs, maybe a modular PLC you can see on the uh, left hand side and then there may be a multiple PLCs, each, each PLC will be handling a particular part of the operation of a system and then second one will be handling, but ultimately they are all communicating together. So, then there will be a multiple PLC, you can have some additional uh, standalone PLCs as well. Then you want to have some, some kind of an operator interface in near certain devices, so you will be having HMIs that is human machine interfaces in form of a screens and push buttons that may be also communicating on the same network. So, now this HMI is basically just a display which are showing some information, it may be capturing some input from the operator. But ultimately the decision maker is PLC, they are not making decisions themselves, they are just capturing the information and, uh, and then communicating to a controller. So, then that information again flow on the network. So, it may be addressed to a particular controller and then it will be again processing and then communicating back onto the display. So, that is the way they are interacting among themselves and the same thing you will be capturing on a PC also. So, I want to visualize what is happening inside the plant. So, then I will be just using those PCs in my office or, or nowadays in a mobile phone also. But then ultimately the controller sits somewhere else, it is doing those, those processing and I can access that information over a network. So, that network can be anything, it network can be a wireless network, network can be a GPRS network, can be a satellite network, set network can be a wired network like a LAN. Right? So, that is the uh, depend how vast you can extend that uh, information. Fine. Right? So, with this uh, understanding, uh, please take out the sheets, Dilshad please distribute, you have already distributed. So, next slide is basically a quiz question for you. So, in this case, this is a system shown over here, uh, it is a basically automated water sprinkling system. The system is not made using PLC, nowadays it is developed using embedded controllers. I have just taken an example to demonstrate 
what kind of interfaces it has in this case. So, you can see here there is a uh, PLC and there are two modules connected to a PLC, fine. Then there are certain devices around, I will just uh, just have a look here and then I will just explain with the next slide. Now here PLC based controls for an automatic water sprinkler system for a garden. Now we deliver water to grass, flowers and trees. If you see here there are three types of plants here, uh, it is a grass, flowers and trees basically. So requirements will be different, right. Then I will be using a temperature sensor which reads 0 to 100 degree centigrade and I am having an, a humidity sensor which reads 0 to 100 percent relative humidity, fine. So that, that you can if you just see in the slide you have a, a temperature sensor here and a humidity sensor over here, fine. Then there are three proportional solenoid walls, now the I am just talking about a proportional solenoid. It means that you are able to control flow rate. So now these three proportional solenoid walls which open 0 percent at 0 volt and 100 percent at 10 volt. Uh, connected to a pipeline delivering 10 liters per minute water. So now if you see here uh, there is a pump and there is a tank and then this line is basically delivering the water and then at the entry of all solenoid walls it is 10 liter per minute. But then I am regulating that flow by using proportional solenoid walls. So that I will be delivering appropriate liters per minute to different types because plant different plants have different requirements. So some some requires three liter per minute, some requires five liter per minute, some requires ten liter per minute or whatever. So I will be regulating that flow by using these proportional solenoid walls there. Then this is fine. Then there is a water tank with four level float sensor. Now there is a water tank here because I am interested to know what is the level of water inside the tank also. So but I am not interested in knowing the continuous range, I just want to know 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent and 100 percent. So I placed four reed switches there and there is a float. How many of you are aware of this kind of a sensor? How to sense the level? Uh, how many of you know what is reed switch? So it is a fault on my part, I am not discussed on sensors. But reed switch, let me just quickly explain you, it is basically a contact housed in a glass, fine. And then this contact respond with the external magnetic field. So whenever you bring a permanent magnet there near this, it will get closed. It is the cheapest proximity sensor or I should say cheapest proximity switch. You will get a proximity switch in the form of a reed switch in 15 rupees which is not possible by using a uh, electronic proximity switch. So wherever there is a, a low cost requirements people use this reed switches. So whenever there is a permanent magnet coming near the, it will close the contact without physically touching it. So that is the beauty it is a operating from a distance but then it requires a magnet permanent magnet for this operation. So then they are simple switches they are simple switches only thing is that rather than you are pushing them to oper close they are operating with the field. So in this case these reed switches has been placed at four different levels, right. So you just house these reed switches in a stainless steel tube. So you put a stainless steel tube and then there are four reed switches sitting inside this tube. Then on outside this tube you can have a light material which can float and then just cover the inner layer with a permanent magnet. So then what will happen as soon as the level will rise this float will be rising. And whenever it comes near the reed switch because of this permanent magnet that reed contact will get closed and then you can read the level right. So from that you can read the level. So that is the way it has been used over here. So you have reed switches then there is a float and then you are getting some output coming from this sensor which has to be interfaced with the PLC. That will help in un understanding the level of water inside the uh, tank. So float contains magnet ring and the tube contains four reed switches placed at four different levels. Water level indicator is also there, so fine I placed a, a switch inside the tank but how, how I should know that also because sometimes information for controller is fine but I would like some visualization as well for my information whether system is working properly or not and I should also be interested in getting that information along with the automated control, fine. So I need to put some kind of an indicator for me to know the level. So that you can see here there are four indicators there, water level indicator. So I, I will say I will be using four lamps, fine. So there are four lamps, 
each is denoting one level 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 3 by 4 and 1. So, there are four different levels that will be indicated by the lamp fine. Water pump should be controlled by PLC to maintain water level between 1 by 4 that is fine that is the logic part I am not going into the logic part. The problem uh, for you to solve at this stage is you have to just identify the IOs. So, as we have discussed uh, before uh, DI, DO, AI, AO there are four type of IOs there two inputs two types of inputs and two types of outputs. To build this system to wire this system physically how many IOs of particular type required for this system that is what you have to write. So, you have to just write DI and then you have to write DO and then finally, you will be writing the numbers DI how many DIs you require how many DOs you require how many AI you require how many AO you require. Please do not share this information sorry ah, it is ok I have just shown this so that I will show later. So, uh, just hide your answers. So, based on understanding that we developed in the morning uh, in last half an hour and I am sure that you will be clear at least whether you read digital or analog. So, that is what I just want to capture <laughs> here. So, in this system complete system if you see you have to just find out first which are inputs which are outputs that is the first query you should have. Once you know that which inputs and which output then second which type of that input and output you require right. So, these two things you have to just understand and then write on your sheet because this is the first step in uh, towards using PLCs you should identify the type of inputs and type of outputs okay. then only we will talk about the programming part first we need to understand the interfacing proportional, proportional yeah that I have mentioned that they are these are proportional solenoids I want to control the flow rate using these solenoids and as I have mentioned that they are 0 percent open means fully closed at 0 volt and uh, fully open at 10 volt right. So, I can I want to achieve any value in between. Done. Please swap your sheets to a nearby member for checking. Just exchange your sheets. We can just have a quick check. Please swap your sheets so that it will get evaluated. And now we will discuss how many DI, DO, and AI AO required. And you yourself will be checking those sheets. Right? I would like to reduce my burden later. Okay? I think please swap your sheets. Don't keep your sheets with you. Please exchange your sheets with your partner. Or, or, or you can just pass on back also if there are odd numbers sitting in a row. Please, please just pass on at the back, it is fine, fine. So, now you have to as a teacher now you have to play your role, right? you have to put right or wrong. So, before that I would like to discuss here uh, what how many DIs you identified in this system, 4, I want to have multiple answers otherwise all will be right, 4. All of you four, can you read from the sheets that has been shared with you other than four anyone written? By using encoder, decoder, read switches are four. No, no, I am just two. asking the number two, two. good A any more numbers you can see on the sheets one, one. good any other number. So, maximum four minimum one fine good DOs five. 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 Oh, I got all numbers 2, 3, 4, yeah, 1 also, yeah, good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> uh, anyone more than 5? Okay, good. So, uh, AI, how many AI we require? 2, 2, 3, good. Only 2? 5, yeah, good. 5. No 4? No 1? Sure, good. AOs? How many AOs we require? 3, 5, 1, 4, good 2. So, complete uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> so, we have so many answers, it is good. So, out of this only one is correct that you have to correct on the sheet. So, I will just discussing how 4, 1, 2, 3, 5 and then we will be just freezing that fine. So, let us come to DI. 
Now, we will come to the uh, slide. Let us start identifying which are the digital inputs over here. Four read switches, you agree that there are four read switches. So, less than four is not correct, we will just cut it. Please cut on the sheets wherever you find less than four immediately and so maximum is four only. I think I, I do not have any other answer over here. So, so correct answer is four. So, just, just correct that on the sheet, do not correct it, mark right or wrong, <laughs> do not make it 4. <laughs> so, just put right or wrong. So, DI is final, we all agreed there are 4 DOs, uh, sorry DIs in the system and there will be these 4 DIs are basically 4 read switches that I will be using in the sensor, fine. And then yeah, yes, we should clarify to those who have mentioned 1 or 2 also because let them understand this. So, so yeah, you your. No, no, we are not talking about those. I think he is going to adding to a next advanced level. We are not discussing that. Any one? Who said one? Ah, yeah. Can you please um, statement that statement in which the. Yeah, let me just show you that. Ah, yeah. It is written that the water pump should be controlled of PLC to maintain water level between 1 by 4 and 1 inside the tank. It is not saying that it should be 1 by 4, half. 3 by 4 and 1. So, why do they That's what I am saying. That is part of a logic how you will maintain the water level in between. It is about the number of reads which is. Don't they require only 1 by 4 and 1 in this case? Why do we require the intermediate ones also? For indication. See, this is something controlled, but as I mentioned that, I have just put some logic for controlling the uh, level in the tank. But I, I want to know what the level. So, I have placed 4 indicators over there. How I get that information then? So, controller is doing some task, I want to have some information for my user. Right? So, DO, uh, we have all sort of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let us cut down some of them. Uh, so, DO, where exactly you require? Four level. Water, Water pump. Four level. Indicator. Water pump. Water pump. One is for pump, definitely to make it on and off. Right? And four are basically for the indicators. Right? So, I think so, five we require here. So, all 1, 2, 3, 4, we should cut it. So, those who just uh, place 1, 2, 3, 4, they just cut it, put 5. Now, let us come to the AI and AO part, they are more interested. Uh, so, AI analog inputs, where you will be getting here? 2. Which is the third one? Water level cannot be analog. Temperature and temperature. What is placed in the water level indicator? Well, sorry, water level sensor. So, no confusion. So, we have only two analog inputs in the system. Cut all three and five. I think who mentioned five? Any any others? We can just clarify on that whether it is a digital or analog or AI or AO. No. So, the correct answer is two. Fine, two analog inputs. Now, analog outputs three. Two. Can I get uh, which two? I should have basically all options here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, why 1 exactly who have identified 1 and which 1 it is? So, but the I have 3 solenoids. So, 1 is now out of this question. 2? No? Can you read where it is 2? <laughs> I think because no one is telling that where it is 2. So, can you just have a look on the sheet that you have where it is mentioned 2? No one mentioned two. No one. Okay, good. You are so cooperative among yourselves. <laughs> so, uh, so no two. Four. Which which fourth one you have seen here? The three I can see solidized. Which four fourth you have seen and which fifth I don't know. So I will just cut out all three numbers. So this is the correct answer. And you just after marking you please exchange the sheets again. You just give the right. Corrected sheets to your partners. Yeah, please. No, I have not mentioned that. It can require many things, but for this particular problem, I am just interested to know whatever I just stated. Good. Done. So, you understand, I think, uh, to a great extent, how to identify the inputs and outputs in a system. Fine. That is the first part of this exercise. Uh, let me quickly then move fast because we will be having a limited time. Uh, so, let us talk about the programming now. This we understand uh, how to connect the physical devices to the PLC. 
So, on one side will be connecting inputs, other side will be connecting output. Let us come to the core what to write in a logic and how to write that logic, right. So, for that you required as I mentioned you required some software for doing the same thing, but as I mentioned the programming is not the syntax based programming, there are options available, but right now I am not interested in communicating that. I am just giving you a simple basic programming concept that is a ladder logic, how to build a logic using these graphical programming symbols and it looks like ladder, so people call it a ladder logic, right. So, they will just discuss on that. So, finally, the program will look like this. So, you will be learning a program like this, uh, I will be just covering how it will look like this and what we have to learn for the same. This is the architecture of a, 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 our lab, uh, we will have uh, 5 uh, standalone PLCs and then we have 1 advanced PLCs, then we have in fact, the advanced one is controlling motors as well, we will give you a demonstration in the lab how it is controlling motors and then we have a variable frequency drive and then we have remote IOs also. So, this is basically the complete uh, functionality that I can show you in the lab and then we have an HMI also, right. So, let me just start with a, a ladder logic how we will be building that. Now, let me just because it is easy to understand by an example. So, let me come to the example that you have done yesterday. Yeah, this one. So, suppose if I have to uh, uh, make a circuit for this and I have to write a logic for this, right. So, first thing uh, we will be just drawing a connection diagram, I always say it is a connection diagram where you will be drawing a PLC along with input and along with output, right. So, you will just draw this connection block. So, physically you will be having certain terminals, screw terminals on the PLC where you will be fixing your wires, right. So, now in this case, uh, how many inputs and outputs now I, 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 am, uh, I am assuming that you can identify very fast. So, how many inputs and how many outputs you require here? Four inputs. Four inputs. Yeah, so four inputs basically, four DI I should say, four DI because we are using four proximity switches, two for each cylinder, right. So, that is a four and then I will be using uh, 4 outputs to control 4 solenoids, right. So, if I just take a uh, same uh, pneumatic circuit where you will be using double solenoid walls for controlling individual cylinders, right. So, so just let us continue with the same <coughs> circuit diagram. Pneumatic circuit, each wall having 2 solenoids, one for each uh, movement and then there are 2 cylinders, so we will be having 4, right. Yeah, we can we can include a, a sensor to sense the boxes in the magazine, right. So, that is a 5, so we can just add one more, 1 di to sense the box, the blocks in the, because if there is no block in the magazine, there is no need to do the operation, right. One more we can add a push button, right. So, we can add one more, so that we need a user input in this case. So, one more di we will add say the cycle will start whenever I press 1. So, let us do for 1 cycle, 1 cycle means whenever I press start push button, 1 block should be ejected and the cylinder will go back, right. So, that is the same operation we will be doing over here. Now, with this uh, uh, let me just come to the slide here. So, we will end up in getting 6 digital inputs in this case and 4 digital output we require. The first thing is that we need to connect uh, these inputs and outputs with this block. So, then it will represent the connection diagram. So, let us quickly connect that. So, 4 uh, digital inputs. So, let me draw a proximity symbol over here. So, when you draw a connection, you will be basically making all 3 wire connections. One is for plus 24 volt DC because you require to give input supply to all sensors I will just make the connections 4 then I will be requiring 2 more one is basically uh, let me just place a limit switch fine and then let me place a push button fine. 
So, so these are the elements and then we will just name them quickly. This is 1 b 1, 1 b 2, this is 2 b 1, 2 b 2. This will be a start S1 and this I will put 1 S2 something like this. So, I named uh, some of the uh, elements then we will just show plus 24 volt and they all should be connected with this. So, let me just connect that. So, all will be getting 24 volt and the other side should be connected to the ground. So, we will just mark that ground symbol. like this. So, we have connected proximity switches to the PLC and now left out is basically the uh, push buttons. So, we will just connect them to plus 24 volt. So, these are the connections to be done on the input side. So, this is the input. Similarly, you can just connect the elements on the output side. So, we will just connect solenoids, 4 solenoids what should I connect on the other side of the solenoid? What should I connect on this side? No, 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 this all has to be connected together and where exactly I am connecting this? 0 volt. No, cylinder will come in the pneumatic circuit, it is not in the PLC. So, we have connected this and we will just quickly name them. This is 1 y 1, this is 1 y 2, this is 2 y 1 and this is 2 y 2. This permanent 0. Why we need that? Uh, let me just explain that because one terminal of this solenoid is connected to the output of a PLC. So, if PLC output will be 0, solenoid will be off if PLC output will be 24 volt, then it will complete the circuit and make the solenoid on. Correct? Potential free definitely requires a relay in between, I have not drawn that. So, this is basically the connection diagram for uh, our problem that we are just trying to solve. Uh, this is the connection diagram for this. Now, you see the difference uh, uh, as compared to electro pneumatics. We have built logic also using the connections. Here, we have not built the logic. We have just interfaced, we have just connected the uh, input devices and output devices, that is all. So, you have to physically just connect the input and output devices to the PLC, then we will write the logic. So, logic part we are writing in a soft form, it is not hardwired. Only thing that hardwired is basically the devices, input and output devices, right? this is fine. Now, we will start learning how to write the logic for this. Right? So, as you know that uh, in case of a uh, electro pneumatic circuits, you have used a plus 24 volt line and 0 volt line and we will try to build vertical current paths, right? uh, build logical current paths. Same thing holds true here, but we just turn it we will make it vertical rather than horizontal, we will just made it vertical. So, there will be a one line here and there will be another line on the other side. We will just draw two vertical lines, earlier we have drawn a horizontal lines, this time we would like to draw vertical lines. Assuming that though it is not mentioned anywhere, assuming that one line is your 24 volt line and another line is 0 volt line. Just to uh, demonstrate the analogy between the two, how the programming has been made simplified for the PLCs using ladder logic. So, plus 24 volt, 0 volt. So, I have just drawn vertically. The way we have added the current paths basically in the electro pneumatic circuits, we will be adding horizontal lines in this case, right? Fine. What exactly that horizontal line represents that we will discuss? It is basically representing the complete connection between the input and output. So, we will first convert the input and output elements basically or devices because PLC do not know what exactly you have connected outside, it cannot see. It is only you know that what you have physically connected. In this diagram, if I just show you, uh, 
uh, I can change the connections because now because I have shown you the connections you have drawn exactly the same way. But if I have asked you to draw yourself, you may end up in making connections anywhere. I, I could have connected S1 and 1S2 to the first two pins and then four proximity switches, it is fine, there is no problem in that. So, the order of connections varies, but PLC do not know what exactly you are connecting physically outside, fine. Physically PLC only knows that these are the terminal 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5 and so on. So, physically we need to identify these are the terminal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Similarly, on the output side as well, so we will be having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Fine. PLC only understand on terminal 0, I have to read something. Similarly, it understand I have to read something from terminal 4. Fine. You know that what exactly you are physically connected. Fine. So, let me just come to this. In this case, the logic if you remember for the step 1, what exactly you are doing? You are checking where the push button is pressed. Fine. Then you are checking, uh, yeah, the other two, the two cylinders are at the retracted end position. Fine. So, those three inputs if I see here in this diagram, they will be coming from, if I am just writing logically this uh, uh, information, so then S1 or because 1S2 also should be there, we are sensing the uh, magazine, uh, blocks in the magazine also. So, I will just write S1 and 1S2 and 1B1 because now I am no more using relays here. So, another is 2B1, 1. 2 are basically for uh, second solenoid for X retracting it. So, uh, retracted and so retracted position is represented by 1B1 and 2B1 and extended position is represented by the 2B1, 2B2. We are putting two proximity switches. So, this is the condition, logical condition I understand that S1, 1S2, 1B1 and 2B1. These are the four and required to actuate a solenoid. So, this, this is the sensing part, this is the sensing part that we have understood here. So, these are coming from input. What exact output you want here? We want to energize a solenoid that is 1 by 1. Got it? So, this is what we understood now. Now, we need to represent the same information in this uh, programming. So, for reading each input I will be using a symbol. Okay. So, there, there are and these symbols are not just uh, uh, graphical symbols, they are certain type of instructions. So, if I just draw a symbol here right now, I am not just drawing inside the ladder. This is a symbol that I will be using in the program and that is basically a instruction which we call XIC that is examine if close, there is an instruction and there is a plenty of instructions where which we have to draw inside this ladder logic. Right? So, I am just starting from a basic one and then there is an instruction which is OTE that is output energize. So, one is the input instruction, another is the output instruction. So, examine if close, this is the input and OTE is basically output energize that is an output instruction. So, you need to understand which is the input symbol, which is the output symbol. Right? So, these are the two basic instructions and they will be using for this particular problem. Right? Now, when I say examine if close, it is a symbol. Whenever I draw this symbol in this ladder, let me just draw this uh, symbol in the ladder. I have just drawn the first symbol over here. It says examine if close. So, what is the second question here? If I just ask PLC to examine if close, <coughs> what to examine what, what and where to examine, that is something very important. So, when I put a symbol, I need to tell PLC what to examine. So, then, then you know that what exactly I have connected to the PLC and which input I want to read. Fine. So, that is basically the address. If I just give you an, a very uh, good example here, I ask one of you to please go to Anubhadwaji's house. 
<laughs> second question is where is his house? So, this is so simple. So, if, if I am just asking a, a PLC to examine something, it will ask where? So, that is something the uh, most important part is the address part and we need to understand the addressing here. See, once we physically connected uh, these devices, I know where I have physically connected them and then I will instruct the PLC, please examine input 0 and then see the state whether it is true or false, fine. Sa same thing we will be keep on doing, we will add few more input symbols and then ask PLC to examine input 2, <coughs> fine. So, it means that I need to specify the address on each instruction that I am putting into the ladder. So, that is the importance of the ladder. But address uh, cannot be like IIT Delhi Hoshkas. It has to be in some format that PLC can understand. So, there is a particular format. I will be just explaining with reference to the Rockwell PLC because we will be using the same. So, the addressing scheme that I will be discussing in the coming slide is basically for Allen Bradley PLC. The similar addressing scheme may be applicable for different PLC types. So, that you can find out yourself. So, let me just quickly come on to the addressing. There is a way of addressing an uh, uh, input or output uh, in PLC. So, all addresses has to be written in this form. What exactly these terms means, uh, let me quickly explain. Uh, PLC stores the information, so because there is a big memory size, it always classify them into certain files. So, again see the terminology has been developed, so that it will facilitate people to understand that. As we keep different files in our drawer and we will keep certain files of accounts here, certain files of a project in the second drawer and so on. So, same thing PLC also has been done, the, the classification of memory has been done in terms of different files. So, all input related uh, information has to be stacked together, all output related information to be stacked together, timer should be in at one location, controller uh, counter should be at another location. So, that way information has been spread in or organized in a file inside the PLC. So, we will understand with the, I will just show you that yeah, this is a kind of a file structure if you see. Again files may be of different types, some files are holding data and some files are holding uh, program, <coughs> fine. So, some, 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 just, uh, some are just recording the numbers and somewhere we will put logic also. So, that way there are two types of files, data files and a program files. We can write multiple program, we will discuss later on if the time permits how we will be holding that. And then we will be having different data files, uh, integer file, bit file output file, input file, timers, counters and so on. So, there, there, uh, there may be different uh, files available inside the PLC. So, first term that is basically the file type and it is specially important when we are talking about input and output. So, we need to write letter I for the input files and, and we need to use O for output files. So, if I just come over here, I will be identifying all inputs starting with I and all outputs I will be starting identifying starting with O. So, this is a file number, fine, uh, the file uh, type sorry, not file number, file type that we have specified over here. Then comes basically, so once you have a file type I or O, then comes basically in a optional part uh, uh, data file number, you can put because that is 0 for output and 1 for input that you can specify over here data file number, right. But it is optional, uh, normally we are not using it, fine. So, we just put i, then puts a colon here, I will just uh, show you here, uh, you will be adding a colon after that. So, you will be separating in a file uh, type and file number with a colon. So, on, on this colon, so I have written i or o, then we, we put a colon. Then next is basically the slot number, S is there, so after colon you will be putting slot. Now, what exactly slot is, let me explain that. As we discussed, there may be multiple modules connected to a same PLC, fine. And when I talk about the standalone PLC, it will be housing the inputs and outputs inside it, fine. So, those inputs and output which are directly connected with the PLC controller, we call it as slot 0. Right. So, say if I, if I am using a standalone PLC, all inputs and outputs are directly wired to my controller and I will call them in a slot 0, which are directly mounted onto the PLC. 
if I am adding an additional module to the PLC, then address may be same. Address means if I am just using this, let me just show this. In this case, I have numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have just connected something directly to the PLC. I can have an add on modules to this. Suppose if my inputs are exceeding 5, <coughs> I would like to add another module to this to expand the number of inputs, fine. And that input module also has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fine. So, third module if I will add, it will also have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because first terminal is 0, second terminal is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. If I just write 0 here, then PLC again get confused, 0 of what? the 0 of the input terminal directly on the PLC or it is on some different module that you have connected to it. So, that is basically known as slot. So, the fixed slot or I should say the default slot that is directly on the PLC is slot 0 and if I add first module to it, it will be slot 1 and the second module will be slot 2 and so on. So, if the, the input is directly onto the PLC, we will always put slot 0, fine. Right? and then additional modules will be identified as a slot. So, the second uh, alphabet that will place over here is basically slot. So, that is slot number and by default basically we are using the same uh, terminal on the PLC. So, we will be putting 0. When I put 0, it means the I have directly connected with the PLC. These number of slots vary with the type. Vary, vary with the type and, and it all depends on how many slots you have added how many modules you have added. Some fixed one and then we can add additional. Fixed one is only 0, there is only 0 mm -hmm. which is fixed and it has a by default 8 inputs or, or depend, it is already coming with a specification of a PLC. That will vary with the PLC. With the PLC. Okay. And then over and above if you want to expand it then you will be adding modules and each module will be identified as a slot, right. So, this is slot number, then I put a dot here. Then comes the word, let me just, because this is very important to understand the address. If you put a wrong address onto the symbol, then, then you will, your program will not be running and, and I want you to do the same practice in the lab. So, uh, in this case, we put a slot, then dot, it is a word limiter, a delimiter, then put a word. Uh, what is the size of a word, if I say in terms of a terminology of a computer? 8 bit is a byte, 16 bit. Yeah, 16 bits so because this is a 16 bit PLC, so it will be a 16 bit, fine. So, when I say word, it means a, there is a memory reserved for this and that is 16 bit, fine. And when I am saying I am using a digital input, so I will be just using only one bit of that 16. So, so if I am having a 16 digital inputs in my PLC, one word is good enough. I can store the complete information in one word and that memory organization PLC is doing themselves. We are not worried about that. So, if I am using a digital inputs here, I will be putting word 0 means f word 0 is sufficient enough to handle 16 bits. If your information is spanning more than 16 bits, then I will be using second word and some of the instructions are using multiple words. So, when I talk about the timers, counters, they are supposed to store some additional information then it required word 1, word 2 and so on. So, that number that number should come over here, if I just show you here. So, that is word and we will be putting 0 because our, our case is 16 bit is good enough and 16 bit uh, information for handling digital inputs is good. And then whenever I put a slash, then I am talking about a particular bit of a word. So, this word is there and then I will be using a particular bit of that word. So, just put slash and then put b, b is basically the bit number. Let me explain again this with a, a, a sheet. So, I will just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, sorry, 14, 15. This is one word. If I just use this location in the memory, this is one word for me yeah, and, and I will call it a word 0, fine. So, word 0 is this. Now, when I am talking about a digital input, fine. So, now you understand how the PLC is understanding which input to read. Each physical terminal on a PLC here, each physical terminal on PLC 
is mapped onto a memory location. So, if I am talking about input, the terminal 0 is mapped onto the bit 0, terminal 1 is mapped onto the bit 1, terminal 2 is mapped onto bit 2 and so on. Right? So, if the physical 24 volt is available on a particular terminal, PLC will scan it and update the memory. So, it will write 1 if it is high, if it is low it will write 0 and it will keep on scanning that. So, there is a scan cycle inside a PLC and which is keep on running at certain speed so 2 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz and so on. So, it will keep on reading inputs continuously and keep on updating the memory. So, whenever we draw this instruction, we just draw this instruction examine if close. So, when whatever number of logic that we have we will write here, it will keep on scanning that letter again and again. So, in few milliseconds or microsecond it will come to this instruction again and it will check whether it is open or close. So, whenever it is on, when switch is pressed or push button is pressed, immediately it will update under the uh, memory location and that will be 1, right. And, and then that bit location has to be written in this address slash b means bit of that particular word. So, let me just write the address of this. If I am saying, if I want to represent the input, if I want to read the input from S1, if I am just want to read the input from S1 that is a push button, now it is connected with which terminal? 5. So, can you write the address of this input? I want to read from a push button. What should be the address here? Yeah, just write i colon 0 dot 0 slash 5, that is the address. So, how do we decide upon the word I could not understand, like how is it 0 for 16 bit? Uh, see, for inputs up to 16, because we are talking about digital inputs, when we talk about the analog then it will be uh, uh, different. When we say digital input, it means that if I am reserving, because minimum entity is one word you have to reserve in the memory. So, for input I am reserving one word in the memory, same thing for the output also, when I say word 0 I will be reserving one word in the memory. So, one word is capable of handling it 16 inputs and 16 outputs basically. So, if I am exceeding more than that either I will be changing word or I will be putting a different slot. So, how is it 0 related to that word? Word 0 is 0, miss. that is the uh, word 0, yeah, uh, next word will be 1, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that is how memory get organized. So, I have just mentioned i colon 0 dot 0 slash 5. Now, when I put this address on this instruction, now PLC is knowledgeable now. So, whenever it encounters this symbol with this address, it will immediately read the state of the pin 0. So, if you are not pressing the push button, it will keep on reading 0 again and again. As soon as you press it, it will immediately read 1, done, fine. So, that is the one instruction, but I need to add 3 more instructions with this. Yes, not only the push button pressed, at the same moment I want to check other uh, inputs also. So, can you just complete that part, just add these 3 more, 1S2, 1B1. We can change these addresses also in the hardware accordingly, we can write in the That is what I am saying that, that is right, it does not matter. See that is what only you know that what exactly you are trying to examine, you are just communicating to the PLC, because you know what physically you have connected with the PLC. So, it will keep on changing that address will be different from different. So, this connection diagram is very important that the ladder logic has to be evaluated based on this, right. So, yeah. Where? That is what I said, that is an option. So, so option. So, for PLC, so they will come uh, when we discuss timers and counters. So, then it will be 4 T4 for timers, counters it will be C5. It is a 0 and 1 for input and output, but that is optional, we are not using it here. Right? So, can you just complete this uh, uh, rung little bit more, right? just increase this logic further. So, we will be putting second examine if close symbol, correct. So, we will just put in series because we know that we need to do end of the logic and then write the address, what would be the second address that is 1 S 2. Yeah, so just put i colon 0 0.0 slash 4. Similarly, I will add third one because we want to put them in AND. So, I will just keep on adding in series. 
So, then it will be i colon 0 0.0 slash 0 and then last one i colon 0 0.0 slash 2. So, I have added 4 input symbols, put them in series and then put the address appropriate address onto that. Now, PLC only understand these addressing, uh, it will read all these inputs. Whenever it will come for the execution of this particular rung of a ladder, a particular line in a ladder, it will just read these inputs and then AND it. AND it means it will examine whether this is open or closed, so it is true or false. So, true or false for each <coughs> input. When I put 4 in series, it means if any of them is false, the final logic will be false. So, if I just want to get the logic here, at this point it is all basically end of 4 inputs. If any of them is not true, then I will be getting false and if any of them is, if all of them are true, then we will be getting true. So, after this decision once I know that state, I want to control something, right. So, then I will be adding an output. So, each ladder rung if you see there is certain input symbols, but the last symbol should be output, please do not jumble them. The last symbol on the right hand side should be an output symbol. So, we will just add the output here and again same thing we will put an address on this. What should be the address for this output? We will start with O colon 0 0.0 slash 0. It is a 1 by 1 we want to make it on. Solenoid 1 by 1 we have connected at uh, uh, terminal 0, right. So, this is the output address, you have done that. You learn the PLC programming that is what it is, yeah. So word 0 will because till 16 bits we are using word 0, till 16 inputs. That is what I have added the file type, if you see the file type is different. Okay. If I use I, I am using input file type, if I am using O, I am using output file type. So, 16 bits of output file type and 16 bits of input file type, that is why the word will remain 0. Yeah, word, word, correct, of the same slot. Same slot. If you are having more than uh, 16 in the same slot, then it will be word change or your PLC should be 32 bit, correct, you got that point. So, uh, otherwise I will be extending in another slot, fine, that is what. So, this is your logic, yeah. 32 bit, yeah, 32 bit. Okay. So, this is your first logic, whenever whenever I write this program, if I will transfer this program into a PLC, then it will execute this, it will check all the inputs and then appropriately executing the output, fine. So, this is the first one, please complete this. So, what is the meaning of delimiter? Delimiter, delimiter just separating the words, okay. separating the, the characters, uh, characters, separating the characters basically, delimiter is just, yeah. Top to bottom, left to right, yeah, the scanning cycle will be top to bottom. So, it will first scan the lead rung 1, rung 2 and so on. So, it will come till down and last will be the end and then it will go back, fine. And then from in the same rung, it will be from left to right. That is the reason that you have to place the output at the right hand side, fine. Just do that, just complete this problem now, actually I think the problem that we were just discussing. So, you have to implement. Uh, 1 a plus 2 a plus 2 a minus 1 a minus, just do this, just write a logic, so just add the another rung into this, so this is one rung, we call it rung and, and as you keep on adding down, you will see there is a ladder ready, PLC can climb on it, fine, so just make that ladder, so just add the second one, so first step is done, so this is basically the program for step 1. Now, you can correlate the thing that you have drawn as a switches, a push button combination in the electronumatic circuit. Same logic we have just picked up from there. Instead of making a wide connection between elements, I will just draw these symbols in the logic and that is how it is easy to reprogram again and again. We are not going to change the physical connections, but we can change the way the output is behaving by just changing the logic. Right? So, that is a good part. We just add uh, to this, please complete it on the sheet that I have given to you, so it is a quiz problem. So, one I have already done for you, uh, next three you have to draw.
I will just show you the uh, problem if you want to have it. Yeah. So, in this program can two outputs connected in parallel? Output can be connected in parallel, but output cannot be connected in series. So, there should all be only one output at the end. If you want to have multiple output energized together, then you just put them in parallel. And if there is any OR condition, then you will be placing those symbols in parallel. So, input symbol you can just place in parallel, you will be getting an OR logic. If you need help, I can just show this one also. This is for one cycle only, not automatic continuous. Not automatic continuous. Because the other valve is getting the… See, in this case, the reason being because you are uh, starting the cycle by a push button. So, once you press a push button, you release it, then your cycle will stop again at the rung 1. Second, yeah, or, or if you want to continue it, you have to add certain other inputs. Because we are initiating with S1, either you keep just press the S1 continuously, it will keep on doing it again and again, or you should have some other input which will make it here. Right? Finish it so that we will have a tea break. I think this is what I just want to communicate to you in this two hours and I am sure that you are now equipped with writing a PLC program and we will do hands on in the lab session. There, there are many more instructions that I will just show you in the lab also so that will help you. Just recall the same uh, steps that we have discussed yesterday. So, when the second step will start? What would be the input for the second step? Yeah, so once your cylinder will extend it, so 1 B 2 is the input and through that you will be controlling the solenoid, fine. So, that way you can write the second step, same thing you can do in the third and fourth. Just draw it so that it will be easy for you to do experiment. If you just finish, just hand over the sheets to Dilshad. <laughs>